Hi, so this is uh, <clears throat> this is part two, and uh, this is Studio B, otherwise known as my kitchen, our kitchen, um, and <clears throat> this is the second part of, of gluing uh, a painting down to a panel, and this was half of a painting. I'm going to show you the the original frame here, so you can see that the frame it's about half that, and I I had it. Um, for about a year hanging on the wall and I decided that it uh, it wasn't worth saving and uh, but I thought I could get half a painting out of it I have a scale from 1 to 10 and this is about a it was about a 5.1 and then I cut it in half and now it's about a 6 um, so I think that you know if I add some some red to the tree and maybe uh, some red light across the field and stuff fix up the water um, do some more work on the sky and stuff, I think I can have a painting. Uh, this is done on linen. Um, it's linen that was given to me by a nice lady named Shelley Mitchell, who's also a painter. Um, and she had a birthday the other day. Happy birthday. Um, this is gessoed linen, pre-gessoed linen. So I live next to the ocean, and I use linen, and I put it on a four-foot square panel, and uh, yeah, you can do that. So I put it on a, on a four foot square panel and uh, being next to the ocean, the water, uh, the linen just sucked up the water. So I had a nice uh, tight painting one day and then when it went out into the world, uh, the next day it kind of started to look more like an apple doll. Um, and that's not a good thing for painting. So I had to take it off the stretcher and I had to put it on a panel and it took me five hours to do. I learned a lot um, and so this is much smaller so it's easier, more, it's a lot easier to contain. So if you're going to use linen and you're near water, um, the best thing to do, buy the, the pre-gessoed stuff, put the gessoed stuff, uh, gesso side down around the stretcher and then put a new surface on, on, the, uh, on the linen with gesso on top of that. And there you go, and it, it won't absorb water. So it also helps with the gesso side down. It's going to make a nice uh, bond with the wood, um, and off you go. So when I did the the big one, uh, there was about three times that I thought uh, I've ruined it. So you have to just keep going in those situations. You don't stop and say I've ruined it. You just keep going and make the best of it. If you can glue it down, you know at worst. You could run it through a table saw. <laughs> this is fine art we're talking about. Um, so there's lots of ways you can you can uh, improvise and and just like I did, I cut a painting in half, and now I'm going to have another painting, and this is going to be a lot better than the big one. Um, so I might screw up here, but I'm going to try it anyway. And uh, at worst, things fall. Down. <laughs> um, it doesn't work, but anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up with one hand. And I'm going to put glue on, spread it out here. Uh, last night, I glued the top about this much. And now it's secure so that the, the painting won't shift on the panel. Um, so I'm going to put uh, glue the rest of it, get the glue as close to that as I can, where it's actually glued down. I don't want to pull this too tight because I'll kink the linen. So um, I've done all that, and I kinked the linen a couple of times with the big one. But my wife had an idea of putting uh, uh, just raw linen on top and using a cold iron. And that got everything out. And it was touch and go for quite a while. So uh, what else? So uh, just so yeah, that's it. I just had a couple of notes. So uh, at some point, you just have to go and do it. So I'm going to shut up. And when I've done this, I'm going to put this big board. This is 30 by 30. I have another 30 by 30 board. I'm going to put on that and then put the books on that and let it sit for for a while. So here we go. <laughs> All right. If I get it right, it won't be nerve-wracking because I I won't have to chop the painting up or anything like that. 
and if it doesn't glue right out to the edges, um, that's okay too, because I can come back and work on that. So now I'm going to give this a bit of a roll, just to push some of the glue so that I don't have any, any bumps in it. may or may not teach you in art school. I don't know. I went to four of them and learned a few things, but I'm sure there are materials people online that are going to say, oh, you shouldn't use that. It's got acid in it, or they'll find some reason to discount what I'm doing. But This all has to be done fast. I'm sure that there's a glue that I could use that would not set up quite as quickly, but the wood absorbs this. I thought another way to do this would be to put a thin layer of glue on the wood to seal it, and then come back. Come back and do what I'm doing here. Trying to get rid of the ridges. There. And over there. I can hear it sort of creaking underneath. I don't know what that means, but I don't really care because in the end I didn't have a painting, and if this works, I may have a good painting, and this is how I pay my rent. I make a living doing this, so when you have to make a living, you come up with lots of different ways to solve problems. And so that's that. I think that'll work. Now I'm going to put this 30 by 30 piece of wood on it. My wife's piano stool's under this, so. It makes it nice to work on, but she can't play the piano while I'm doing this. This is a good book on Degas, by the way. There! Um, I think that's it. Uh, where's the top to the... I think that glue's almost done anyway. Um, I think that's it. I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have a painting around and it's on canvas and you see that there's a brilliant painting in the corner, don't be afraid to cut it up and glue it down to a panel. So this is part two. Part three might be when I get the thing all done and I paint it, uh, I'll describe that too. So thanks. Bye.